Hello everyone, Jeff and Jay here with another edition of Jay's Big Adventure, Jay's the Fuzzy One. And today we're doing an update on our 2012 BMW K1600 GT. Since the last episode on the bike, I um, made a couple of changes. The uh, graphics for the Alzheimer's Association were getting pretty tired, so I removed those and just added a couple of uh, small pinstripes and motorsport colors, which is fine. But what I really wanted to talk about today is the rear tire. We went dark side last fall and got a lot of grief when I did that, but I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience with this rear car tire over the last 8,000 miles. When we put the tire on, it had 930 seconds of tread. We're down to six now, between five and a half and six right now. So we've used between a half and a third of the tire's useful life, but we've gone 8,000 miles. On a normal motorcycle tire, I'd be pushing to get 7,000 out of it unless I was on a long trip. And those tires are 200, 225, 250 a piece, depending on um, what brand you get. This tire is a Bridgestone RE90 092A, and it was $77. I got it from a great place called bestusedtires.com. It was a brand new takeoff and it had no miles on it when I got it. 77 bucks. I'm, I'm looking at another one now, and that tire is $70. So if I can get you know, 15, 16,000 miles on a tire for less than 100 bucks mounted and balanced, that's a screaming deal. So when I went dark side, uh, of course, <laughs> the internet went crazy when I said I was gonna put a car tire on a motorcycle. How dare I, especially on a performance bike like a BMW, but um, really did make a lot of sense just because on a, even here in Utah, and I spent a lot of time in the mountains where I'm leaned over and, and riding pretty hard, I'm only using this much of the center strip of the tire for straight ahead motorcycling. And even here, that's a good portion of my miles. And I've got a trip back to Indiana scheduled coming up in, in June. That's going to be a minimum of three or 4,000 miles just on super slab. So there's no chance of me using the cornering part of the tire because I'm just going straight down the interstate and I'll wear a tire out, almost, or almost all of it, on that trip alone. Having a car tire, you've got four times as much rubber on the ground for straight ahead and it still sticks fine in the corners. I can still drag the pegs on both sides. I've never had the rear tire slip and so the traction does not seem to change. If I was on a sport bike, if I was going to the track on a regular basis, absolutely, I'm sure there would be a drop in traction. But for this motorcycle, even as hard as I ride, I've never had an issue with that tire sticking. The fact that it is $70 or $75 or $80 instead of $250 is a huge advantage, plus they last twice as long. Now, after having put 8,000 miles on, on that tire, there are a couple of minor things that you notice when you're riding the bike. If you've never ridden this particular motorcycle, you would not know that they are strange. It's not something that jumps out at you, but if the road has any kind of grooving in it, you know, where the heavy trucks are going, you can feel the back end just a little bit kind of wander around on you. Um, if, there's, if the road is sloping at all, here up and down my street, it's crowned pretty heavily. Yes, you can tell that it takes a little bit more pressure on the bars to keep the bike straight, but it's really minor. The difference is less than going from a worn out tire to a new tire, even if we're talking motorcycle to motorcycle. So we're talking a very small difference. Is it detectable? Yes. Does it mean anything? Absolutely not. My biggest concern was on those very, very gentle right to left transitions where you'd feel that tire kind of kick up and down. You don't feel any of that. So by far the, um, the advantage of this tire is the economics. I'm getting the same traction, I'm getting the same performance, it's just a whole bunch less money. Well that's kind of a no brainer. One of the other things that people say is, well a car tire doesn't have the same shape as a motorcycle tire when it comes to the rim. So here is the front tire. This is a motorcycle tire. It's the correct size. And you can see there's a little bit of a gap 
between the edge of the bead and the, and the inside of the rim. A little bit of a gap there, nothing major, but there's definitely a space right there. So here is the motorcycle, I'm sorry, the car tire. There, that tire is right flush against the edge. Come around here and see whether you can see this. There is less gap here than there was on the motorcycle tire. So because that bead is rubber and it is um, able to contour itself to the edge of the rim, there's no issues with that tire coming off by itself. I've taken a motorcycle uh, tire off a rim before, this bike on the rear, and that was the biggest hassle of the whole job is trying to get that darn bead unseated. The fact that I now have a wider bead and it's firmer rubber, you know, is it's just not going to be a problem. And once I've got air in the tire with 40 PSI behind it, I guarantee you that tire cannot come off that bead while you're riding it. I could run it down to zero PSI and probably still have plenty of control to be able to pull over and stop without worrying about that tire coming off the bead, let alone off the wheel. So after 8,000 miles, I'm absolutely in love. I love the economics. There's no change in traction level and I am never going back to a rear motorcycle tire. I am always looking for unique solutions to various and sundry motorcycle related problems. And I found a gentleman by the name of Mark Parnes that makes a whole bunch of really trick stuff for BMWs. Um, I've got his LED lights up here for the Valentine 1 radar detector. Uh, the radar detector sits here and those lights are really bright and they flash whenever the detector goes off. It helps me see that. Then I've got one of his tire balancers that's custom made for BMWs that have lug bolts on the rear wheel. Also has an axle adapter for the front. But he also makes a special adapter specifically for going dark side for this motorcycle. Most BMWs will work as well. You can see that little spacer behind the wheel and that's the same thickness as the one I had on here before. But he makes this adapter specifically for this hub, so it's an exact fit. And he sells the longer lug bolts as well. And, and that's important because this hub is aluminum. It's not steel. On a car, that hub where the lug bolts fit is steel, it's hard, and if you get six threads into that carrier, that's all you need. Because this is aluminum, and aluminum is a lot softer, I was a little concerned about that. Um, about those those bolts pulling out and if it would strip the threads in that hub that's really expensive so because I liked the way the bike rode so well I'm not going back to a motorcycle tire on the back so order the right spacer solve the problem and now it's good to go thanks for watching please like please subscribe please share and stay tuned for another episode soon